Things have been tumultuous for Halo recently, particularly because of the Master Chief Collection, which has had severe issues since last November. In many ways, then, Halo 5 Guardians is a chance at redemption. The first mainline Halo on the Xbox One, Guardians could have played things safe, choosing to cater to longtime fans by giving them something that's been done before. Instead, the game is one of the most ambitious entries in the series. Sometimes, ambition comes at the cost of scope, but Halo 5 has so much for players to dig into. Not to mention, the completely overhauled mechanics make Halo feel better than ever. Yet for as much as there is to praise, there's some significant shortcomings that dampen the grandeur of an otherwise excellent game. If there's one word to summarize Halo 5, it's change, and that change is most easily apparent in the new Spartan abilities that give players more options. Being able to aim down the sights of every gun may be passe in other shooters, but it fundamentally alters the feel of Halo. The Magnum hasn't exactly been a go-to multiplayer weapon in the past, but it can be absolutely deadly in Halo 5, partly because of the increased utility the improved aiming offers. The result is that Halo 5 is all about precision, raising the skill ceiling to an even higher level. Additionally, since everyone can sprint at all times, the pace of combat is quickened dramatically. Even so, sprinting can't be done indiscriminately. Shields don't recharge as you run, leading to crucial decisions where you essentially have to choose between health and mobility. Remain. Those aren't the only new tools. Players can burst in any direction with their thruster packs, allowing for hasty escapes or for catching up to prey. In midair, you can hover for a few moments and shoot away. The slide is perfect for quickly getting behind cover, and being able to clamber up to high surfaces makes getting around the environment a breeze. The flashiest additions are the Spartan Charge and Ground Pound. After sprinting for a brief time, you can dart forward and slam into your opponent. Seeing someone completely crumple after throwing your entire body into them never loses its appeal. Neither does crashing into them from above with a ground pound, which is difficult to pull off since it has to charge before use, but it only makes success that much sweeter when it happens. The series has always been about being a warrior in technologically superior armor, and the aforementioned additions achieve that sensation more fully than before. Yet these tools offer more than a power fantasy. Knowing where and when to use each of them often means the difference between life and death, adding new levels of depth to the series. Another huge contributing factor to the feel of the game is that it performs at a solid and steady 60 frames per second, even in the most hectic of circumstances. Perhaps the most impressive aspect is that in spite of everything that's different, Halo 5 hasn't lost the signature identity of the series. 343 Industries clearly gets what makes the adventures of Master Chief special to so many, finding that essential Halo-ness and amplifying it. Power weapons are just as vital as ever, and fighting for them is chaotic fun. At the same time, someone exceptionally skilled with a battle rifle can still annihilate anyone and everyone, regardless of what their opposition is wielding. It's easy to take what's new and compare it to other games like Call of Duty and Titanfall, but doing so accomplishes as little. Halo 5 is easily one of the best playing shooters of the year, and it reaches this height on its own terms. Taking a storm, right? During the campaign, there were roughly a dozen or so times we completely stopped whatever it was we were doing to take in a scene. Sometimes that meant gazing upward, where ships would be dogfighting all around us. During other moments, we were hesitant to push forward because of towering entities known as Guardians staring down at us. You'll travel to a foreboding space station, an exotic forest, and a war-torn alien planet. The meticulous level of detail and bold artistic direction truly make you feel like a stranger in a strange land, in the best possible way. Halo 5 arguably features the strongest level design of the series to date. Inquisitive Spartans will find tucked away passages containing unique weapons. Replaying levels can reveal entirely different approaches, capturing and expanding upon the very particular sandbox style that Halo Combat Evolved introduced in 2001. If only the story met the same standard. It's difficult to go into too much detail without ruining things, but there are times when the game makes narrative leaps that don't add up. Worse are moments meant to be deeply emotional that come across as embarrassingly ham-fisted. Curiously, despite how important Master Chief is to everything that happens, players only get to control him for three of the 15 available missions. Perhaps this would be better if Jameson Locke and his Osiris team were more likable. For the most part, they're stoic, forgettable soldiers, and the game offers little to no reason to care about them. The same can be said about Master Chief's blue team, which consists of equally blank slates. He's fine, Fred. When playing alone, your three AI teammates are absolutely horrendous at helping you out. 
Numerous times we requested revival after being downed by an enemy, and they simply stood gawking by our side. Other times we'd be facing a small army, and they'd be off in a corner not firing a shot. The game is still very manageable without reliable support, preventing these issues from being much more than an occasional annoyance. Except on Legendary, the highest difficulty setting, where you really need as much assistance as possible. Considering how much better it is to have human partners, it's upsetting that there's no matchmaking for co-op. What do you think that's about? Those that primarily play Halo for the multiplayer are in luck because it's largely outstanding. Arena, the chief competitive mode where two teams of four duke it out on small battlefields, is very finely tuned. Power weapons spawn at specific intervals and an announcer counts down their arrival, ensuring tense moments when entire teams clash for the extra firepower. The game uses your teammates as conduits for information, having their characters say things like, we're being sniped, or revealing an enemy at a particular location. It can't be used as a crutch, but it's a nice addition, especially if your team isn't particularly chatty. The new radar also works quite well, revealing enemies at enough distance to be useful, but without tracking them so far as to remove the element of surprise. Game over! Victory! Easily our favorite arena mode is Breakout, a new addition to Halo. Players start with no shields, a submachine gun pistol, and one frag grenade. Once killed, you have to wait until the next round to respawn. A team wins by either killing all four opposing players, or capturing a flag and bringing it back to base. Since you're so vulnerable and only have one life per round, the pace is slowed down considerably, and the emphasis on teamwork is even greater. It's some of the most tactical and gripping Halo we've played. <laughs> Halo 5's arena maps are solid with plenty to take advantage of. The greater degree of mobility allows for more interesting vertical design. There are quite a few high buildings to clamber up to and walkways that offer useful vantage points. The only real issue we have is that many of the maps feel very similar, seemingly coming from the same school of thought since the small outposts and corridors resemble one another in form and function. With that being said, this very well could be a problem that evaporates over time as we discover various nuances and learn to play more efficiently. Warzone is the biggest addition to Halo multiplayer, and it's pure bedlam. Two teams of 12 engage on some of the largest maps in the series. There are two ways to win, either capture three bases on the map and then destroy the enemy's core, or be the first to reach a thousand points. The size of the maps and the different objectives make each match intense, since there are so many decisions to make. Is it best to capture a base and secure another strategic location, or chase after an AI boss that's worth a ton of points? As you accomplish objectives during a Warzone match, your requisition level rises, providing access to stronger weapons, vehicles, and power-ups. To get these items, you need to spend rec energy. For example, a small mongoose ATV requires a lower level to call in than a giant scorpion tank. The level of an item corresponds to how much energy it costs, so if you purchase a sniper rifle with all of your energy and then die immediately, you won't be able to get anything else until that energy refills. You're also limited by the amount of cards you have. Cards are acquired by spending rec points on special booster packs. If you only have one shotgun card, then you can only call in a shotgun once during a match. You can sell cards you don't want, converting them into rec points, but this is an overly tedious process, as it's impossible to sell unwanted cards in bulk. Some cards earned by rec packs are permanent unlocks, such as loadout weapons like pistols and battle rifles. Cosmetic items, including helmets, chest pieces, visors, and assassinations, are permanent unlocks as well. Packs can be purchased with in-game rec points or with real money. Although based on our experience, rec points are easy to come by. It helps that you can earn rec points in both Arena and Warzone for pretty much anything you do. As you raise your general multiplayer level, you'll acquire special one-time packs. Completing challenges like getting a certain number of headshots with a specific weapon also nets you special packs. The rec system sounds overly complex on paper, but it's easy enough to wrap your head around after toying with it for a bit. It's also well balanced. Since players are so limited by what they can call in and when, it prevents people with a ton of rec cards from steamrolling over those that don't have very many. The system also makes matches more exciting. Sure, you may burn a powerful card and die immediately, but doing well feels fantastic because you know how valuable the cards are. Using Banshees, Spartan Lasers, Scorpions, and more in Warzone provides that wonderful Halo level of chaos without being utterly broken. Those that don't like the rec system have arena where none of it applies, except for cosmetic items and XP boosts, which don't affect gameplay.
Halo 5 Guardians is a massive game that we intend to keep playing for the foreseeable future. There are parts that let us down, particularly the story, but it's hard to feel too stung when there's just so much fun to be had. Halo 5 has a lot to prove, and it seems fully capable of doing just that. It's a pleasure seeing the series in top form once again. Night Marshal Takedown.